how y'all doing? Well, it's time for some paleo news. Um, Sam Miller Museum, Oklahoma Natural History. We have um, a little deal for many of the graduate students, professors, and volunteers to join up. We talk about um, a couple of published articles in vertebrate paleontology, mostly anyway. So after that, I like to review them here for you all for you to review. Now, the theme of this is ankylosaurs. It is one of those um, roots of dinosaurs most a lot of them don't people don't talk about. They're quite fascinating, really. I wish I studied more up on them. Okay, we're going to talk about a couple of them. Um, one is named from a famous movie monster. Nothing new, but this is the first time it's from the movie you know to talk about. And the other one is a, it, it has a very typical like Kylosaur name, but let's talk about the movie one. Uh, let's see. This one uh, published in the Royal Society, uh, Royal Society Open Science. And which is a Canadian journal, a new ankylosaurian dinosaur from the Judah River Formation of Montana, USA, based on exceptional skeleton with soft tissue, soft tissue preservation. By uh, the authors of Victoria M. Arbor and David C. Evans. I'm going to read the. Excuse me, I have a piece of paper here. Um, read the um, abstract here. The terrestrial Judah River Formation of northern Montana was deposited over approximately four million years. Uh, four million year intervals during the Campanian, let's say Cretaceous, despite having been prospected and collected continuously by paleontologists for over a century, few relatively complete dinosaur skeletons have been discovered from this unit to date. Here we describe a new genus and species of ankylosaurian, uh, of ankylosaurian dinosaur, Zul Corvastator. Zul, as in Ghostbusters. Uh, from the Coal Ridge member of the Judith River Formation. Based on exceptionally complete and well-preserved skeleton, um, this is the first Anglosaurian skeleton known with a complete skull and tail club. It is most complete Anglosaurian ever found in North America. The presence of soft, abundant soft tissue preservation across the skeleton, including in situ osteoderms, skin impressions, and dark film that, prob that probably represents um, preserved keratin. Maybe this exceptional skeleton, you know, make this exceptional skeleton an important reference for understanding the evolution of dermal and epidermal structures in the clade. Phylogenetic analysis recovers Zool as an ankylosaurid, you know, um, within the clade Dioplosaurus and Scolosaurus and Euplocephalus, being more distinct, distantly related with an ankylosaurini. The occurrence of Z. Corivastator from the Upper River uh, Upper Judith um, River Formation fills a gap in Anglosaurian stratigraphic and geographical um, record in North America, and further highlights that companion Anglosaurians were undergoing rapid evolution of stratigraphic succession of taxa. Um, as observed um, for Laramidian, Ceratopsids, Hadrosaurids, Pachycephalosaurids, and Tyrannosaurids. Okay, so let's talk about the name. Yes, this this um, ankylosaur is re is named after the creature Zool from the um, 1986 movie Ghostbusters, and it's understanding why it does have a similar looking head. Um, the skull is kind of crushed and you know, from dorsal ventral a little bit, and also lopsided a bit. You can see that in the journal, which of course I'll link down below. And this is a 28-page um, paper. It's a little lengthy, but you know, such papers when they describe new dinosaurs should be. They need to describe as much as possible. This one's specifically on the head and the tail. Not much on the body itself, but uh, I don't recall, I can't recall this one if they're still getting the body out. But it talks about what all is, you know, what they found discovered, and it's one of the most important things is that it's very well preserved for this type of um, species. And you know, they find, you know, very, you know, the tail club is very well intact. Uh, they find all sorts of scoots and all that. As I said, they compared it to others. They, you know, put it in the phylogeny. They give detailed accounts of all the measurements. Pretty typical of a paper like this, but I think most people. If you ever heard about this, is the fact, hey, we got a dinosaur named after a monster from Ghostbusters. But for those paleontology aficionados that you know want to, you want to see much more, just you know, um, what this animal means, where does it fit in, how well how well it's preserved, which brings to the next article right here. Now this one, again, is a new species, very um, beautifully preserved, and but I think they have a. Um, 
Um, in the meeting there, they we talked about you know their arguments is kind of um shady at best, and you know put a pun on that. Um, from Current Biology, an exceptional preserved three-dimensional armored dinosaur reveals insights into coloration and Cretaceous predator-prey dynamics. Authors are Caleb Brown, Donald Henderson, Jacob Wither, Ian Fletcher, Ainara um, uh, Sestigia, Joshua Herrera, Roger E. Summons, I should have just said Brown et al. <laughs> In brief, um, Brown et al. reports a new exceptionally preserved dinosaur, armored dinosaur showing bony armor with horn coverings and organically preserved scales. A reddish brown coloration and camouflage in the form of counter shading are indicated. Crypsis suggested strong visual pre um, um, predation pressure on this heavily armored dinosaur distinct from modern um, systems. Uh, the highlights read a new, new armored dinosaur is described based on exceptionally preserved specimen. That it is. Abundant in situ osteoderms and keratinous um, sheets and scales and preserves. That is true. Reddish brown coloration in the crypsis in the form of counter is indicated. We'll get to that in a second. Um, crypsis indicates strong predator pressures on a large, heavily armored dinosaurs. Again, please, we'll get to that. This one is named Borrea pelta. And um, new dinosaur. Um, Beautifully preserved, like the first, it's like the first half of it, you know, you can see the head and the top osteoderms. And again, such a gorgeous to look at. And not all of it's perfectly preserved. The back part of it, you know, in one of the illustrations here, seems very eroded off. But up the further up front towards the head, you know, it looks quite nice. Interesting thing about Zool and um, Borea Pelta is that they were both found in... Um, marine deposits, beach in particular, they were found upside down. Apparently this is pretty common for these animals. Um, that doesn't make them necessarily swimmers at all, they just happen to be found along beaches found upside down. And then, yeah, in this case it really helps to preserve this. Oh, Borea pelta, I should give you his full name. Um, Borea pelta, uh, Mark Mitchelly. You know, um, Borea pelta, Latin for Northern Shield. And uh, Mark Mitchell honors a Mark Mitchell um, for more than 7,000 hours of patient and skill preparations of a holotype. Oh, and Zool, um, it's genus epitath, it means shin destroyer. So, yeah. <laughs> so, Zool's in destroyer and um, Northern Shield, um, Mark Mitchell. You know, Mark Mitchell's um, Northern Shield. Kind of weird. But that's how these um, names are. Now. The part I was going to get at, this was brought up to the meeting, that according to this paper, they found chemical traces that could lead to the coloration of what this animal could have been. Could have. You know, because we found a few species where we know, um, where we know the coloration of the feathers of, of, of a couple of dinosaurs. But this one's trying to make um, a similar argument, and it's had counter shading, which you don't know in biology. That's when you have a two different colorations, like one side of the top side of the animal is darker than the bottom side, and that helps with a sort of crypsis camouflage to an extent. You know, and that can be, you know, and that's found in nature, of course, um, specifically vertebrates. But here's the thing: the chemicals they claim is that it could lead to that conclusion is also found in the oceans, which is where these animals were found in deposits near oceans. So it could put a hamper on their argument. I mean, if they're right, that's fine, but I'll let you read for itself. This one's not that long, it's only 12 pages, but just the fact that it's a new dinosaur species is enough to, um, you know, hey, you know, look what they found, look how well-preserved it is. So there you go, um, I'll link it down below as, um, as always. Um, so two new ankylosaurus species. And, and again, the reason why I do this, because if you want to study things like science or in particular paleontology, good to go directly to the source itself. So you want you all to do that. Thank you all for watching. You have a nice day.